Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Ingenious Engineer. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make Python take decisions based on what the user enters into the program. To do this, we're going to be using a function called the if loop. Here's an image to help you better visualize how the if loop works. Let's imagine the code asks for the user to enter a number from 1 to 10. And if the user enters a number greater than 5, it will add one point to the user's score. If the number is less than five, there will be no point added. Now let's imagine the user enters eight. That means the statement is true and the code will add one to the score. In other words, the statement eight is greater than five is true and therefore the code will add one to the score. Now, if the user entered a number less than five, such as two, then the statement 2 is greater than 5 is false, and so the code will not add 1 to the user's score. So here I have Python open, and I'm going to show you how to use the if loop in an actual code. Let's use the example that I gave earlier. We want the code to ask the user to enter a number from 1 to 10. If the number is greater than 5, it will add a point to the user's score. If the number is less than 5, nothing will be added to the score. First, what we're going to do is create a variable called score, and we're going to make it equal zero, so that every time the code restarts, the score will be reset to zero. Next, we're going to create a variable called a, and we're going to make it equal an input. If you don't know what inputs are, I'm going to put a link to that in the description box below. To help Python, we also are going to make the input be an integer. So first, we're going to type int. If you don't know what integers are, I'll put that too in the description box below. So I'm going to type in integer and then inside that input. And then inside that, I'm going to type in the question, which is pick a number from 1 to 10. So what it's going to do is ask for a number from 1 to 10. And that number is going to be A. Next, we need to create an if loop. To create an if loop, you type in if, and then the variable, which is a. Then you type in the symbol that you want. So we want to check if a is greater than or equal to 5 first. So we're going to type in greater than or equal to. So what this means is it's going to check whether a is greater than or equal to the next number that we put, which will be 5. And then you end it with a semicolon so that Python knows that this is a if loop. So what it's going to do is check if a is greater than or equal to 5, and if it is, it's going to continue. You can see that Python indented, and that means it recognized the if loop, and it's working inside the if loop. So inside the if loop, we're going to type in score equals score plus 1. What this is going to do is add 1 to the score. Then we're going to print the score. So basically what's going to happen is it will ask the user for a number from 1 to 10. If the number is greater than or equal to 5, it will add 1 to the score and print the score. Next, we need to make sure Python knows what to do if the number is less than 5. So we're going to um, skip a line and then go down a bit. And we're going to click backspace and that will remove the indent. So that means we are no longer working inside of this if loop. We're going to type in else. What this does is, if none of the previous conditions are satisfied, which is only this one in our case, it will go on to the else. Then we, click, then we put a semicolon and click enter. Again, it will indent. Then we print the number is less than 5. You do not get a point. Now we're finished with this code. Let's overview what it's going to do. First, it will ask the user for a number from 1 to 10 and store it as an integer. Then, if a is greater than or equal to 5, it will add 1 to the score and then print the score. If this previous condition isn't fulfilled, it will print the number is less than 5, you do not get a point. Finally, it's time to run the code and see if it works. So I'm going to just click run, 
and it asks me to pick a number from 1 to 10. I'll pick 6. Since that's greater than 5, it should add 1 to my score. Since my score is 0, my score should now become 1 once I click enter. And as you can see, it has become 1. Now let's run it again and see what happens if I pick a number less than 5. I'll pick 1. And it says the number is less than 5, you do not get a point. So we can see this code works and Python can successfully recognize whether the number I entered is less than or greater than 5. Now I'm going to show you another type of if loop. It is called else if and is used when there are multiple conditions. In Python, it is written as elif, spelled E-L-I-F, instead of the normal if loop. Here is another image to help visualize what the elif loop looks like. In this image, the first condition is that the answer is greater than or equal to 10. If it's true, then Python will print got it at least 10. If the answer is greater than or equal to 5, it will print got at least 5. And if it's greater than or equal to 3, it will print got at least 3. If it is none of those, it will just say nothing. So I'm back in Python now, and I'm going to show you guys how to do the second example. First, we want to ask a question, so I'm going to create a variable called answers. I'm going to make it equal an integer again, and it will be an input. Inside the input, I'm just going to say pick a number. Now that the user will have picked a number, we want to create our first if loop. So the first if loop is going to check whether or not the answer is greater than or equal to 10. So I'm going to write if answer is greater than or equal to 10, then we will print you got at least 10. And then we're going to skip a line and then backspace so that the indent is no longer there. Now we're going to use the LF loop. To do that, you just have to replace if with LF like this. And then we're now going to check whether answer is greater than or equal to 5. Type in answer and then greater than or equal to symbol, then 5. Now we're going to print you got at least 5. So now Python knows what to do if the user types a number greater than 10 or greater than 5. Now we will create our third elif loop, or third if loop. This one will also be an elif, because everything after the first if loop will have to be an elif loop for it to work. So this time we're going to check whether the number the user put is greater than or equal to 3. So we put answer and gr the greater than or equal to symbol and then three. And then we will print you got at least three. Now last but not least, we will put the else loop so that Python knows what to do if none of the previous conditions are fulfilled. So just put else and the semicolon, and then we will print you pick a number less than 3. So now what will happen is first, Python will ask the user to pick a number, any number, and then it will ask, it will check if that number is greater than or equal to 10. If it is, it will print, you got at least 10. Then it will do the second one and figure out whether the number the user entered is greater than or equal to 5. If so, it will print, you got at least 5. And then, it will check if the answer is greater than or equal to 3, and print, you got at least 3. If none of those conditions are fulfilled, it will print, you picked a number less than 3. Now keep in mind that if the number is greater than 10, it won't print, 
you got at least 10, and you got at least 5, and you got at least 3. It will only pl print you got at least 10, because if the first condition is fulfilled, it will do that and then skip down to over here where there's nothing, and so the code will end. Now let's run the code to see if it works. First, Python asks me to pick a number. So I'll pick first, I'll pick a number that is greater than 10. So I'll pick 50. Click enter, and it will say you got at least 10. That's correct. Now I'm going to run again, and this time pick a number less than 10, but greater than 5. So I'll pick 7 and click enter. And as you can see, it says you got at least 5. Now I'll pick a number that is between 3 and 5. I'll pick 3. And it says you got at least 3. So as of now, Python has done everything correctly. I'm going to run again, and this time I'm going to pick a number less than 3. I'm going to pick 2. And it says you picked a number less than 3. So we can see this code works, and Python is able to recognize whether the number is greater than 10, greater than 5, greater than 3, or none of those. Sometimes we want two conditions to be fulfilled before we proceed with to do whatever's inside the if loop. For this, we use a function called and inside the if loop. This illustration helps visualize how the and function works. In the example, if the age is greater than or equal to eight and the grade is greater than or equal to three, the user will be allowed to play. If even one of those conditions aren't fulfilled, then it will say you cannot play. Let's use the example to write a code in Python. The example states that two questions are asked, one for the user's age and one for their grade level. So first, I'm going to create a variable called age. This will ask for the user's age. It's again going to be an integer input. And inside, I will type, what is your age? Now, I'm going to ask for their grade. So I'm going to again make it an integer and an input, and this time ask, what is your grade level? So now that both the questions are asked, we need to create the if loop using the and function. So first we type if, and then we figure out if the age is greater than or equal to eight because that was the first condition. So I'm going to write age, and then the greater than or equal to symbol, and then eight. So that'll first check if the age is greater than or equal to eight. And then we type and. So that's how you use the and function. Then we need to check if the grade is greater than or equal to three. So I'll type grade, and the greater than or equal to sign, and then three and end it with a semi. So now what it's going to do is figure out the age of the user and the grade of the user. Then it will check whether the age is greater than or equal to eight. If it is, then it will check if the grade is greater than or equal to three. If both of those conditions are fulfilled, it will go on to the second line. Here we're going to use a print function to just type, you can play the game. Now, Python needs to know what to do if either or both of the conditions are not fulfilled. So we'll use the else function and then print you can't play the game. I'm going to click run now and it asks me for my age. So I'll fulfill the first requirement and type 9. Now, when it asks me for my grade level, I'm going to type Four. That also fulfills the second requirement. It says I can play the game. That's good. Now, let me not fulfill one of the requirements. I'll fulfill the age requirement, but not the grade requirement. And now it says I can't play the game. If I do the opposite and don't fulfill the, the age requirement, but do fulfill the grade requirement, again, it says I cannot play the game. And if none of them are fulfilled, it says, I can't play the game. So we can see Python is working correctly, and the AND function makes sure that both conditions are fulfilled before you proceed. Sometimes in Python, we have multiple choices for conditions. 
And if even any one of them are fulfilled, then we want Python to proceed. To do this, we use something called, called OR. Now, OR works sort of like the AND function, except instead of giving two conditions that have to be fulfilled, it gives multiple choices for conditions, and either of them can be fulfilled for the code to proceed. Again, here's an image to help illustrate that. In this image, there are three choices. The color equals red, blue, or green. If the user enters any one of those, then you can proceed. However, if they don't enter red, blue, or green, then they cannot proceed. In Python, this looks very similar to the AND function. So again, we're using the example to write a code. First, we want to ask the user to enter a color. So it's, I'm going to call the variable color. Then this time we need to make it equal a string because the user is not entering a number. They're entering a word such as red, blue, or green. So I'm going to write str and then in parentheses input and again in parentheses I'm going to ask pick a color. Now that the user picked a color, we want Python to figure out if the color is red, blue, or green. And if it is either of those, we want it to proceed. So for that, we're going to do if color, and then I'm going to put two equal signs. This is called the equal to symbol, and it is used when you are figuring out whether one thing is equal to the other. It gets confused with this symbol right here, which is more of a statement rather than a question. It is saying that color is and always is this input. This is checking whether color is blue or red or green. So what we're going to do is type if color is equal to, and then we're going to put quotation marks since this previous one was a string. And then we're going to type blue. Then we go out of the quotation marks and then type or. So this is the or function that I was talking about. Then we type color is equal to red, and then or color is equal to green. Now, once we do that, we're going to put the semicolon and then click enter to indent. Now we're just going to print, you can play the game. Like always, we need to create an else function so that Python knows what to do if none of the conditions are satisfied. So for else, we just are going to print, you cannot play. Now let's run the code and see if it works. It asked me to pick a color. Let me click blue. See, it says I can play the game. Now let me pick red. It says I can play the game. Now let me pick green. It says I can play the game. Now let me pick a color that is not red, blue, or green. Let me pick yellow. And it says I cannot play. Now one thing to remember is that when Python is looking whether the user entered blue, it is case sensitive. So if I were to type blue with a capital B, it would not work. So even if you misspelled blue or green or red, Python wouldn't know that. It would be looking for blue just as it is written or red just as it is written. So sometimes it's useful to like put more or functions so that the user has more options so that they can capitalize through a color. The if function is used a lot in coding because it is very important for the code to recognize whether the user has entered one thing or the other. They're used in games to figure out what to do if the user clicks something. They're used in just normal codes to figure out what to do next. So it's very important to know what if loops do. And these are all the basic functions in it for if loops, the elif, the else, the or, and the and functions. There are multiple other functions, but these are what are mo used mostly. Now that you know how to use if loops, you can create more complex, responsive, and more fun codes. 
You can create guessing games or other interactive programs. I hope you learned something from this video, and if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more spectacular content. See you next time. Thank you.